Hey guys, Tim Church here with Ethernet Blueprint. Welcome to video number five of our little video series called Unify for Newbies. Now, if you're new to my content, new to the series, new to my channel, or maybe just stumbled upon this video, what we've done is actually release eight videos all at the same time, all geared towards the Unify newbie. So if you're new to the Ubiquiti ecospace, you are in the right place. Now, I wanna take a minute to review what we've done and what we have left, and then we'll go ahead and get started with the video. Video number one was really geared towards who is a Ubiquity network for. We talk about who their customer really is, the components that make up a Ubiquity network, how it all connects together, and I even make some general suggestions for you guys to help you kind of get started with your network. Video number two is all about the research. We actually move over into the Unify store and I show you how to look up specifications on equipment, how to look up power levels and how to filter your results and look at costs so you guys can start doing research for your home network. Now, video number three, we dive right in and we actually get your equipment online. We're actually gonna build out a lab environment and we get all that equipment online. I show you two different ways you can do that, one with your smartphone and one with your laptop, just so you guys can choose which one is best for you. Video number four, we make some VLANs. Now, I know this is scary for a lot of people, but we do take it step by step, and I talk you through that process um, and walk you through how to create networks, how to assign those networks to wireless networks, and then also how to assign switch ports on a switch to certain VLANs so you guys can start designing and planning how your network's going to look. Now, video number five, today's video is gonna be all about the guest network. Unify, Unify gives you a couple different options for a guest network. So we're gonna talk about four different things to kind of think about and show you some different ways that you can set it up so you can decide what's best for you. Then video number six is gonna be the scary one, right? We're gonna talk about firewall rules and we're gonna take it very, very slow and step by step and we're gonna actually take the network that we built earlier and we're gonna start putting some security rules behind it so it can be safe and secure for your home and your family. Then videos seven and eight are gonna be geared towards Unify Protect and cameras and how to get that online and working and set up and we're gonna do some global settings and I'll just talk through pretty much everything on how to set up a Unify Protect system so you guys can um, start incorporating that. Now, this is meant to kind of mix and match and, and watch the parts that apply to you. Some parts like today's video might not apply to you and that's okay. The goal is to help anybody who's doing this and we all have a little bit different a journey. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into guest networks and get that set up on our system. All right, so like I mentioned a little bit ago, there's basically four things that I kind of want to get you thinking about as it pertains to setting up a guest network on Unify, okay? Now, let's look at what they are. The first thing is, is do you want to completely isolate your guest devices? Now, when I say completely isolate, I mean that device can get to the internet and the internet only. Even if there's another device on the guest network, they cannot talk to each other. Okay, so if your guest had a phone and a laptop, those devices will not talk to each other. They are completely isolated and they can only get to the internet. Okay, so that's kind of option A. That's like the lockdown version. Um, option two, do you want your guest devices to be able to communicate with each other on the guest network and the internet, but still be isolated from your normal traffic? So this is a very normal way of having a guest network, okay? Your devices, you don't care if they can talk to each other, but you don't want them talking to anything internally. They can just get to the internet, and if they want to talk to each other, they can. That's a very common way of setting up guest networks and generally how a lot of them are set up, okay? Um, the third option, do any of your guest devices, so someone connecting to your guest network, do you want them to have the ability to be able to communicate at all with anything internally? Could be one of your IoT, IoT devices, could be a TV, could be a printer, whatever. You have someone come and house sit, right? And they're gonna be at your house for a week and they need to do homework, so they need to be able to print, but you wanna put them on that guest network. Do you want them to have the ability to do that? Okay, so if the answer is yes, we're gonna set up your guest network completely different. Okay, we're not gonna use one of the built-in features that are here because they're typically not allowing the, that to happen, okay? And the last thing is, is do you want a portal to sign into? Now, this is one of the cool things or gimmicky things or whatever that Ubiquity has in that on your guest Wi-Fi network, Someone could get a splash page brought up to them that says, welcome to the Ethernet Blueprint guest page. Please uh, agree to our terms and conditions 
and click sign in and you can you know splash that up to them and they have to do something before you allow them on the network they have to read your terms and conditions or they have to agree to something right um, again kind of a cool thing especially on a small business and there's a lot of ways you can take that portal there's Facebook sign in so you can get Facebook information and that's where the business side of it really comes in but from a home standpoint would you like a portal to display to your guests before they get on the internet. All right, so those are the four things we're gonna kinda talk about today. And the big one really is the portal thing. So you can have the portal work with some of these other options. So that's kind of the big one answer. Do you care about having this portal pop up? All right, so I'm gonna show you what the portal looks like just real briefly, kind of the default one. And then we'll go to the configuration and we'll talk through each of these options so you guys know how to set them up that way. All right guys, so I'm gonna dive into the configuration here. I'm gonna show you where to find all the settings for um, setting up a guest network and creating a landing page and all that stuff. We're gonna talk about it in here. Now, before we get into setting up the stuff, I wanna kind of recap a little bit what set up, like what we did in the last video. So as part of our last video, we actually created all of our VLANs. We actually went in and actually created each VLAN. And one of the VLANs I did create was our guest network, okay? We created a guest VLAN. But we just left everything as default. There's no guest settings turned on. It's just another network on our, on our router, okay? There's no guest, no landing page, no nothing. We're gonna do all of that as part of this video. We did not create the Wi-Fi for it. I want to make that a part of this video as well. So as it stands right now, if I click into my settings and I click into networks, this is where our VLANs are. And again, if you guys are just watching this video and haven't watched the last one, you might wanna go back and watch that last video. But you'll notice we have our default network, our IoT VLAN, camera VLAN, and this guest VLAN, which is VLAN 99, okay? So that's been created. If we go into our Wi-Fi networks, we have our home Wi-Fi, our IoT Wi-Fi, but there is no guest Wi-Fi, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do in this video is we're actually gonna create our guest Wi-Fi, and I'm gonna show you the first thing that I do not love about how Ubiquity set this up, okay? I think it's confusing, and I don't really love it. So let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit Create New. This is a Wi-Fi network, so we're gonna create a Wi-Fi network called My Guest Wi-Fi. Okay, the password is going to be welcome one. I think I typed that right. Nope, forgot the, forgot the E. All right, welcome one, all right. So that's our password. Now right here is where we choose which network we want our guest to connect to. So by default, it's default, but this is a dropdown and we're gonna go ahead and choose our guest network. Now this brings up something interesting, right? We talked about it in the last video, but you always wanna create your, your VLANs first and then go create your Wi-Fi networks to connect to those VLANs, okay? If we did this backwards, you'd create the Wi-Fi networks, there would be, this dropdown wouldn't exist, then you'd go create your VLANs, then you'd have to go back in your wireless network and redirect them. So a general rule of thumb is create your VLANs first and then go create your Wi-Fi. So we already have our guest VLAN, this is right here, guest network. So we're gonna choose that. And then I'm going to show you the first confusing thing that Ubiquity did. So under manual settings here, in our Wi-Fi settings, we have something called hotspot portal. When I click it, it says, we have applied your hotspot portal. That is the, the landing page, the splash page that we're talking about. So this Wi-Fi network now has that enabled right now. And by default, portal guests will be isolated from other guests and network resources. So completely isolated, this is that first bullet point. And I think this is really meant to be worked in like a business, like an internet cafe or something where you don't want your guests talking to each other. Everybody wants their own privacy and they would never physically connect into a network. They're only going to connect to Wi-Fi. So I'm assuming that's what this is for. But to me, I, I, don't, think they, I don't think this was really uh, described very well, right? Um, but, so basically, everybody's isolated. This is that first bullet point. Nobody can talk to each other. Nobody can talk to other VLANs. You are just isolated. So this would make your internet cafe very safe for everybody to be connected and you don't have to worry about someone else stealing your information or sniffing your computer. So that's what this is really designed for. I don't know that this really has a home in your home. 
because this would not apply to physically connected devices. So if you did have a physically connected device that you wanted in the guest VLAN, this would not apply. That would not be isolated. So again, I don't really know. This really does to me is for a business if, you, if you're asking. So that's my thoughts. I think it's a little counterintuitive. Um, I don't love it. So we're gonna uncheck it. We're not gonna use it as part of this video, but this would be how you could isolate any Wi-Fi guest and have it not talk to each other, just like that first bullet point. Um, maybe that's overkill. Maybe that's what you're looking for, but that's where you'd go to do that. All right, real quick, I'm just gonna set the settings. I usually, I talked through this in the last video, but I'm, I'm just gonna set them real, real quick. Turn on fast roaming, turn on multicast enhancement. If I can check this box here, there we go. And turn off band steering. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add that network. So now we have our guest Wi-Fi, and it is connected to our guest VLAN. Okay, so now let's go into our VLANs and talk through those settings. This is really where the rubber meets the road when it comes to our the rest of those bullet points, okay? So we're gonna go over into networks now. This is where our VLANs are. We're gonna click the guest network, VLAN 99. So I'm just clicking into it, all right? So you can see we have it, our IP settings in here. This is our DACP scope. Everything was left to default. And then as we scroll down, you see this guest network. Now, if I hover over this little cheat sheet, which I'm glad is here, let's read it. So it isolates this network from other virtual networks, from other VLANs. So it's gonna put your guest over here on an island that are not, device, that are not defined as guest networking using firewall rules. So there's basically gonna create some firewall rules for you just by checking the box. And it's gonna isolate your guest traffic. Guests on this network are able to communicate with each other. So this is different than that hotspot portal setting we just had. Your guests can talk to each other over here. And to me, that's a little bit more normal in a house, okay? Uh, or maybe your babysitter has both her phone and her laptop on it or something like that because she's doing homework, right? Those two devices could talk to each other in this scenario, okay? Then it says, if the landing page is enabled, which it is by default, um, in the hotspot manager, guests will also be redirected for authentication. So you can actually set your authentication that your guests use in the portal. So if you plan on using the portal, guys, you, do, you don't have to use the welcome one in your Wi-Fi settings. You can actually put it in the portal settings, and I'll show you where that's done, okay? So we're going to go ahead and check that. That basically just turns on the guest network. That is that second bullet point, that... Our, our, our network is isolated, creates rules, the devices can talk to each other, and they can get to the internet, but they can't talk to anything internally, okay? A typical guest network. Before I do that, though, I wanna just highlight this one right below it. The isolate network, again, I don't think poor, I think it's a little bit poorly named, but isolate network means it's gonna isolate this network from all other, all other VLANs, just like the guest portal, using firewall rules, just like the guest, Devices on them can talk and communicate with each other, just like the guest, and get to the internet, okay? So, everything that the guest does, this does, except it doesn't do the portal. So if you just wanted to isolate your people and you didn't want to deal with anything on the portal, you could actually use this checkbox instead, okay? So just, again, something to kind of think about. Do you want the portal or do you not? So we're gonna go ahead and manipulate the captive portal and I'm gonna show you those settings. So we're gonna leave guest network on. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply changes. Now we have to wait for our devices over here to learn. Shouldn't take too long while it's applying that. Okay, so that's done. Now, like I mentioned, the captive portal, the landing page is enabled by default. So as I'm showing you on my cell phone right now, when your devices connect for the first time, they will receive the generic landing page that Ubiquity gives you. So let's go in and look at that. So to get there, we're gonna go not into any of our settings, we're actually gonna go into this insights right here. And then on our top viewer here, uh, it'll say hotspot. Now, the cool, one thing I may, I'm gonna point out here is this placement of the hotspot is very new. It used to be over here, once you enabled the guest portal, you'd receive this hotspot manager button over here on the side. Now they've moved it into Insights. So yours is either gonna be here or it's gonna be on this sidebar depending on what version you're running, okay? That's something very new in one of the most recent versions. I think I'm on version four. So it's, it's, it's probably part of that change. Now, these are devices 
you can actually see your guests. You can manage your guests on your guest network. That's kind of cool. So you could, you know, click on a, on a guest and unauthorize them or extend their time, whatever. Just like you could if it was like a, a internet cafe, right? So that's kind of neat. I don't know how well it works, but it's, it's kind of neat, I guess. And this little thing right here is telling us with the green button that our landing page is turned on. Like I told you, it's on by default. If we want to adjust the settings, we're gonna go ahead and click landing page settings. So we're gonna click this icon and now we get into the portal uh, manager, the landing page, the whatever you wanna call it. This is where we would go to do it. So by default, this is what Ubiquity gives you, all right? And we can change what it says, the title, we can you know, enter our welcome text, we can change the text on our button, we can include a terms and services that they have to check before it allows them to go in and we can um, update what the terms and services are, saying they're agreeing to something. I mean, you can kind of go nuts. It's a little businessy. I don't know if it's anything you would need for your house, but you can do it. You can adjust the logo size, center it, left. I mean, change the colors, enter your own logo, all sorts of things, right? Um, after something is successful, you can route them to a custom URL. So if, if you wanted them to go to Google or you wanted them to go to Facebook, you can enter that there after they get done successfully authenticating on the landing page and away you go. So a lot of cool things in here. And this is where you guys are gonna have to play around. I'm not gonna play around with my settings too much. I wanna talk about some of the other things. Now over here, this is the kind of the branding. You can see the branding. Here is the authentication part. We're gonna do that part last. And then here are the settings for the portal. So if you want to turn on guest policies, but you don't want the landing page, you don't want this to show up, you can click on settings and then you can hit uncheck this, show landing page. Now the landing page is enabled, disabled and your guests will just enter the guest password, welcome one, and they'll be on the guest VLAN, just like the isolate network. This is like the same as the isolate network, okay? But you will be able to um, see your guests in here in this separate guest uh, sort of tracking page, okay? Um, if you, if you just went to the isolate network, you would have to track your clients under normal clients. Okay, so this is this with the guest thing. You also get to um, mandate or run or manipulate your guest on the network, and they're kind of all in one spot, which I guess is kind of nice. So we're going to go in here. Uh, we can uncheck this. We can adjust a few things in here. This is basically how it's isolating um, what networks it can talk to. So you can play with that a little bit. But typically, if you want your guest network over here, you don't want it to be able to talk to anything. You're isolating it, okay? Now, also the default expiration. Let's just say someone's gonna come to your house and watch your dog for three days or house sit for you, right? If you want them to be on the guest network, you can adjust this to seven days, four days, user's fine, pick your days. Um, you can change that, right? So depending on your circumstances, this is how long your guest network will remember them until they have to enter the password again, okay? So that's all set right here inside the settings under default expiration, all right? Over here is our authentication methods. So the first thing I'm gonna mention, I mentioned earlier is, if you don't want them to have to enter welcome one on the Wi-Fi password, you could just leave that open. You could leave it no password on that. They would connect to my guest Wi-Fi, the splash page would come up, and then you can tell them that you want them to enter a, uh, a password here. So we can set our password to welcome one here, okay? So now we set it here, and if I hit save, now when they get to their hotspot, they have to enter the guest password. This comes in handy if you want to change your guest password from time to time, right? You can just all do it right inside with the authentication methods. So you get a little bit of flexibility. Like I said, Ubiquity's done some pretty cool things in here just depending on what you wanna do with your system. Now, I'm not gonna go into how to set all these other ones up, but we'll talk about them briefly. You can have someone authenticate with their Facebook. So you have to you know, tie in Facebook authentication, okay? You can have them pay to use your internet. So you could set up a Stripe account and have them enter credit card information to be able to jump on your, on your Wi-Fi. You could set up vouchers where you have, they have to enter a code to get on that you give them, okay? And then there's some radius stuff. This is nothing we're gonna get into right now. Or 
if you were a business and you had your own portal server that you wanted to redirect them to, instead of using Ubiquiti's built-in server, you could just turn on the guest networks and send them over to an external portal server. So this would, this would be more for a business. You have something already built over here and you're just tying your Ubiquiti network to it. Um, also an option. And they've really added to this over the years. This used to be a much smaller list over the years. So uh, I think they've done some pretty good things. I wish they had an email capture, like built in. That's the one thing I think Ubiquiti is kind of missing. Like if I was doing this for my small business and I, I wanted to capture email addresses, right? Let's say I have a restaurant and you, you let them jump on the Wi-Fi, but in order to do that, you want to capture an email so you can market to them. That's not built into this. And I'm sure you could do it with the external or maybe you can do it with Radius and, and some special tricks, but I just, I, I wish Ubiquity kind of had a, a checkbox where it's built in, where it just captures emails and it could send them to you or, or, or whatnot. So you could use that to market to your audience. To me, that's what's missing, but that's just me. So again, if you don't want this landing page, you can turn it off, okay? And it turns it into a normal guest network, but um, you can kind of see, you have a lot of options you can play with here. And I think it's kind of fun. I, I think this is kind of a fun thing, even in, even for a house. It's overkill, um, but it's kind of fun, you know? You can give someone a personal message. Hey, you're on my personal Wi-Fi, you know? I have the right to monitor your traffic and I can see what you're doing. So don't do anything stupid, right? I mean, it's we live in a scary world, right? And people try to, you never know what your babysitter has been up to. I'm a big believer in having a guest network. You don't know what your babysitter has been up to. I know my my father, I'd have to clean up crap on his laptop all the time because he's trying to download free games because he was bored, right? That usually comes with viruses and all sorts of stuff. I like the idea of isolating that traffic over here. I don't care if they can talk to each other, but I don't want them talking to my normal network. So even family, I like to bring in and have them uh, connect to a guest network. I just don't know what they've been up to when they're not here. So to me, it's the safer way to do this, okay? So the last thing I wanna talk about here is that third bullet point, right? So do you need your guests to be able to communicate with any of your other VLANs? So if that is you, um, I would not use any of the built-in guest features. I would just create a guest VLAN like we did, and I would create firewall rules just like we're gonna do in the next video, um, but I would create some guest-specific firewall rules. We'll just treat it like another VLAN, um, and we'll create some rules that says, this VLAN is isolated, it can get to the internet, and the internet only, but it's also allowed to talk to the printer, or it's allowed to talk to the IoT networker, or, or whatever you wanna do in your house. We can set up those type of rules, but when you use the built-in stuff, you kinda of lose a little bit of the functionality, okay? There's some rules in here. There's some guest rules that are created, and I'll show them to you real quick. But um, you kind of lose some of that, that personality. You're, you're using built-in things. We checked the checkbox and firewall rules were automatically made, right? The other alternative is to do the firewall rules yourself. So if you need your guests to kind of have some special access, or you're doing something maybe a little different with your guest network, I personally wouldn't use any of this stuff. I wouldn't check the checkbox and I would just treat it as a, a normal VLAN and then go in and set up your own firewall rules, which we're gonna learn how to do um, in video number six. Okay, so real quick, we'll go over into our firewall rules, click settings, go to security. Um, you can see right here, traffic and firewall rules. And if we click on guests, which is already checked, you can see here's the rules that were automatically created. Now we can manipulate these rules, we can change them. Um, you kinda gotta know what you're doing if you're gonna do that. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we could manipulate them. And I think that's nice. I think if you knew what you were doing and you wanted to get in there and change these, you absolutely could do that. Um, and this is actually uh, guest, this is guest of IPv6. Here's the guest network rules. So you can see these were all created or most of these were created um, based off of how we set our settings with the landing page. You know, do you want allow hotspot portal authentication? All that's built in here just with a checkbox and tweaking some settings, okay? All right, so hopefully that helps you out, guys. Um, I didn't want to do it, take too much of a deep dive, but I did feel like guest networks deserve their own net or deserve their own video. Some people like to go nuts with this stuff, and I want to reiterate: I'm a big believer in having a guest network. I just don't trust my daughter's friends or my son's friends when they come over and want to connect their stuff. I just don't trust them. I mean, it's nothing against them, but 
you know, you don't know what people are up to. And I think having a guest network is really a good practice. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for video number five. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you found that helpful. Like I said, I think there's enough information there that this deserved its own video, which is why I wanted to do that. Um, if you are new to Ubiquity and want to learn more about this series, guys, start at the beginning, work your way through. That's what it's here for. Um, and I hope you guys found it useful. So uh, next video is going to be about firewall rules. And it's really scary for a lot of people, but we're going to take our time and really just march our way through it. I'm going to give you guys some information you can take with you, which I think is also very helpful. I've actually had people ask for that in the past. So we're going to go ahead and incorporate that in this series. And again, I hope you guys find it helpful. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you guys in video number six.